me start with that. My topic today is, I do understand a little bit of confusing at first, so my proposal is, let me just take you through a 20 minute journey across what's sometimes my uh, mind traps and my mind fields that I have, and try to understand if there's really a connection between what we see every day is in terms of data and the potential role of uh, religion. What I wanted to start is, if we're going to start talking about data, I want to start by first trying to understand what we really mean about this uh, notion of big data, and what do we really mean about uh, data in itself. What do we really do when we're talking about uh, data analytics? The question that you see there, I'm sure most of you already asked. I'm sure this is something that sometimes I do discuss with my students, or I discuss even with uh, my friends. Yes, mathematicians, they do have some friends. Um, and it's something that I'm sure it's always in the back of your mind. It's like how many different times you were talking with a friend of yours or you were talking with somebody and talking about an item that you want to buy, a trip that you want to take, a place that you want to visit, uh, something that you want to get. And then you finish that conversation, you sit back at your computer again, or you start scrolling on your phone, and then you see an ad, or you see information that it's exactly relevant to what you were just talking about. So that's kind of like the notion that something starts coming in the back of your mind. It's like, honestly, they have to be listening to me. There's something on my phone. There's something on my camera, because I also see a bunch of people just tag their cameras. Uh, there's something on my phone or on my camera that makes them watch me, that makes them listen to me. Well, kind of like, I'm sorry to say, but from the perspective of data analytics, it's not really true. The kind of discoveries that we have, the kind of profiling, the kind of ads that you see that are so highly connected to what you see then, the reason why you see those specific ads is actually because of everything else that you do that's not related to voice. Every time you go on Facebook, every single data that you have, every information about stuff that you do is being recorded. And it's being recorded and it's being used to create something that is more specific to you, something that is more guided towards what your needs or your um, desires as a consumer are. So this notion of data actually starts there. Nowadays, we generate so much data, we generate so much information that even when we try to think about it, in the back of our minds, it has to be something that is so huge that it comes to think of us as something like, oh yeah, they have to be listening to us. They have to be uh, taking some extra information that I don't really see. Now, this is the information that we are collecting. Before I start on this wild journey, let me just tell you a little bit about the different kind of uh, notions that we have in terms of these big words like big data or uh, data analytics. So the notion of big data, what we mean by big data is every single one of you is generating information. You, me, everybody, we're all generating information. All this information needs to be organized and that's kind of like the first step that we have. So superhuman capacity, superhuman amount of data that is being generated, that's kind of like what we call big data. And then it's also the notion of the techniques that we use to structure it, to make it something that we can actually look at. Because if we generate so much, how can we actually take some useful, useful information from it? So stage number two is actually trying to make the data that we collect more even, more readable, more usable. And then stage number three is like, let's try to make some decisions. Let's try to make it something that can be used for an end, something that can be used to predict something, something that can be used for some sort of extra information. So all in all, just very quickly, what we do in terms of big data, it's nothing more than trying to find patterns, trying to find uh, ideas, trying to find common terms between, if we're talking about individual data, if we're talking about your own situation, we're trying to identify which ones of you have kind of like similar behaviors, similar actions, similar likes, so we can then profile you, try to identify those patterns. Those patterns, we then move forward with some algorithms and use that information to then produce something. 
produce something that can help me predict your behavior or produce something that can help me sell something, right? So in terms of the real kind of like quick notion of big data, this is it. Huge amount of information that's being collected. We find or use some techniques to make it more structured, to make it more even, and then use that in order to provide some decisions or in order to provide some uh, tools that can help us predict or move in uh, kind of like a different direction. Now, these notions, as we know them, they're not new. The notions of big data, the notions of analytics have been used for a long, long time, especially if you're talking about the corporate sector. Because all this information can be used for a bunch of different sectors like you have there that goes from real estate to health to tourism to a bunch of those like sports or whatever. And they're all used with one final end. They take your information or they take in this specific case the company's information. They try to identify problems. They try to identify patterns. They try to identify what's there that needs to be optimized. Take that solve it, always with a, uh, a goal in mind. Try to optimize, try to cut costs, try to predict, try to forecast, try to guess what's going to happen based on all the information that we have available. So this is the notion from the money-making perspective. So this was used before, but at the corporate level, so we're using this for money purposes. Now, let me just take a pause there and show you why this is becoming so important. I don't know if all of you know the situation. I'm actually going to show both. There was, a few years ago, there was a revolution that made big data more reliable, or not reliable, I think the real word is more credible amongst researchers. I don't know if you guys remember this situation that I have pictured here in these two pictures. First one is about uh, the elections in the US when Mr. Trump won against uh, Ms. Hillary, and the second one is about Brexit in the UK. Both pictures are polls that were done a few days before the election. So that's a poll that was done on the exact date before the election, and that's a clear victory for Hillary. And then the other one about Brexit was a few days before. Clear victory for, well, not that clear, but still a victory for the Remain, and Leave will actually lose. If you know the history, does that sound like right? No. What happened was exactly the opposite. And what made people think about this was, okay, fine, we all got conned, we all got tricked. But what's the real reason why we got tricked? Because all of these were polls, and they were asking people, what would you vote? What would you do if you, had, if you were going to vote now? This is what people said. They were given a questionnaire, they were given a poll, and they said, I would vote for Hillary. I would vote for Remain. So why did the opposite happen? Well, unfortunately, the real issue is people just lied. And the notion about it is this became extremely obvious in terms of questionnaires. Every time we have a questionnaire, we tend to kind of like detach a little bit just move a little bit away of what it really means and then we just go like, whatever, just cross whatever because I just need to get done. If somebody's asking me, are you going to vote for Hillary or are you going to vote for um, Trump? I kind of like feel obliged to say that I'm going to vote for Hillary, but the truth is when the time came, when the voting actually came, I voted for Trump. So this notion of people lying is something that was there always. And it was always in the back of the mind of mathematicians in terms of a problem that was always present in questionnaires. Now, the solution for this problem became big data. Instead of people now, or instead of asking people what to do, what we have is a gemstone. What we have is real actions. If I'm able to understand what kind of like behavior you have in terms of what things do you search for? What kind of uh, videos you watch on YouTube? What kind of feeds do you look at? How much time do you actually spend on Facebook? What kind of things do you actually go for? That's a bit harder to pick because it's no longer a questionnaire. We're talking about actions. And I'm sorry to say people lie, but their actions, their real behavior doesn't. 
you can lie once or twice in your actions, but the trend, the trend is going to be there. So this was in terms of mathematics, in terms of notion on how to deal with things, this was really a revolution. We stopped looking at questionnaires and we stopped looking at a gemstone. What we have is pure, pristine information, not biased, pristine. This is what people do, not what they say they will going to do. Are you going to the gym tomorrow? Yeah, sure I will. Did you go? Nah. That's the real difference. Now, let's stop on that, because I'm tired of saying just bad stuff about people. Let me just take you on a different journey now, completely different one. When I was looking at this, uh, when I was trying to understand exactly what people do, I actually came across the notion, or three different notions from three different philosophers, all of them a bit famous, um, that are trying to talk about the notion of religion. Now, let me take like five or 10 steps back. Let me lie. Um, when I say religion, we're not talking about Catholics, we're not talking about Muslim, we're not talking about Buddhism, we're not talking about any of that. What we're trying to understand is religion in its true form. Meaning like, what do we mean by religion? What is religion? When we say religion in its pure essence, what is that humans are looking for when they say religion? So that's why I went and saw these three philosophers, uh, Kant, Nietzsche, and Hermes, all of them different times, all of them different lines of thought. But if you pay some attention to it, they all have a few words in common. For instance, if I look at Nietzsche, the first thing that I see I'm a mathematician. So the first thing that I see is actually the word measure. So we do need a measure. If we're talking about religion, if we're tro trying to talk about the meaning of life, we need a measure. And we need a measure to find order in the middle of chaos. Second one, Kant. Same notion. I need to be able to find a natural law. And I need to be able to find a natural order. Last one, not 18th century or 19th century like the other ones, 7th century before Christ, Mr. Hermes. This is a very famous saying, but it kind of like pictures the exact same notion. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Same notion for replication of what we had before. So when I looked at this and I saw that these were the definitions, I kind of like went back and asked this question to myself. So can we actually try to tag big data to this notion of divine? Can we actually try to match the two? Like, is there anything in common between what we do in big data, like trying to profile people, trying to be as evil as possible, and what we do in terms of uh, and the definition of religion? Let me show you something else. This was the same one that we started looking at when we define big data. Big data, huge amount of information that the objective is to provide some order. We want to make it even. We want to make it structured. We want to find some balancing. And the key objective is to provide some decisions. So the key objective is also going to be to provide some guidance. So something that, in a sense, it might be a stretch. But in a sense, it's very similar to, I would say, the role of religion. Isn't that what they're all about? Trying to provide some guidance, trying to provide some order, help in your decision-making process. Let me just analyze this once again. If I look at big data as a technique, as a method that it's able to take a huge amount of information, extreme, superhuman. You guys imagine how much information I generate, imagine how much information each one of you generates, and then multiply that by the ones we are here, and now multiply that by the entire world. This amount of information is huge. No human would be able to look at it in the same way, trying to take any conclusion. So if I look at the amount of information that I have, it's being dealt by big data, it's after it's being digested, put into order, 
it's providing some patterns, meaning like it's providing some balance or it's providing some guidance. And in addition to that, it's pristine, sorry. Pristine, unbiased. The information that I have is you, your real you. It's not like when you go to the priest and confess and you say something that you didn't do. No, this is exactly what you do. Your actions can now be balanced because for the first time, we have a 360 perspective of everything that's happening around me. Now, I know it might be a stretch, and my objective is more like of awareness than anything else, but this is actually the first time in terms of the evolution of mankind that we are facing a new dimension of ourselves. It's a mix between the biological you and the digital you. And as long as I'm more aware via big data of my actions, my connections, my behaviors, my flaws, all of that, and this can bring me one step closer to being an improved version of myself. I'm sorry to say again, but isn't that the real role of religion? To just bring me one step further? So in short, and in a sense, my question from the beginning was, can big data play the role of religion? And can it help us find the meaning of life? Well, as long as I'm aware, and as long as I'm looking at something that can help me create a better version of myself, then I would say that's not very different from what we have in terms of the role of religion. If I look at my phone and I see seven hours of screen time, it is seven hours of screen time. It's not a poll. If I see that I should have been going to the gym yesterday and I didn't go, there's a flaw right there. If we use this information that's being fed to companies to make money, but we use it towards our own progression, isn't that the idea of religion? Isn't that like taking control and using the information that's being generated for others, using it towards your own evolution as well, towards your own progress? Isn't that what we mean by the notion of all of this, which is pressing play, take control? That's my idea. Thank you very much.